Today I have the pleasure of speaking with Greg Bowes from Northern Graphite. How are you today, Greg? I'm very well, thank you, Tracy. Greg, I'm delighted to be speaking with you and I'm gonna do something unusual with you. I, I deem you not just to be a CEO of a, of a graphite company, mm -hmm. a well-respected one, but actually as an industry expert. And I gotta ask you, what's happening with graphite prices? Because our writers like John Peterson are telling us this is in demand, the type of graphite you have is in demand, so we should, the prices should be arguably exploding. Uh, yes, and in fact, if you look at lithium, they are. Um, and lithium and graphite have a lot in common. Obviously, they're both used in batteries, and battery demand accounts for about 40% of both markets. But if you look at lithium, the balance of demand is fairly diverse and fairly stable. So you've got a stable base, growing battery demand. Uh, if you look at graphite, the balance of demand is the steel industry, which is tanked. So you've got steel demand going down and you've got battery demand going up and prices staying flat. So I think what we have to look forward to is that um, the steel industry I think has bottomed, iron ore prices are perking up and uh, graphite is lagging lithium in terms of price performance, but it will catch up. Uh, it has to because all the metrics are the same. And of course, Greg, Northern Graphite is known for having a purification technology process yes. that really uh, makes your graphite more competitive. Can you give us an overview on that? Uh, yes, all natural graphite that's used in batteries comes from China and it's purified using hydrofluoric acid, which is one of the nastiest substances known to man. And of course they have lax environmental regulations there. So you kind of have a green car dirty batteries, battery syndrome. So if you're in the West and you want to produce spherical graphite, as all juniors apparently do, you have to have a method of purifying the graphite that's an alternative to the Chinese approach. So that's basically what we've, uh, what we've developed. Something that I enjoyed too in preparing for this interview, Christopher Ecclestone did a lovely piece and he said, I think the quote was, uh, that you're the right size for takeoff. Okay, mm -hmm. he likes the size of Northern Graphite. Can you tell us a little bit more about what he meant when he was saying that? Yes, absolutely. Uh, the graphite market is a little less than 400,000 tons a year. So we're going to produce 20,000 tons a year, which is 5% of the market. Now, any other commodity, if you're building a mine that's going to add 5% 5, 5 to annual demand, that's a little on the aggressive side. Uh, you know, the market has to the, have the ability to absorb that production without affecting price. Everybody else is 40,000 tons a year plus. So that's 10 to 15% of annual world supply. So bringing that much graphite on at one time is a problem because there's uh, the potential that you will negatively affect the price. We've been doing a lot of uh, research lately on the lithium ion battery and of course the demand for cobalt and lithium and graphite. Yes. And we noticed something very intriguing about you in our research. And is it true that uh, Northern Graphite has uh, coolometrics working for you? Uh, yes, that's correct. Uh, Coolometrics is run by uh, Dr. Ed Buell, who does a lot of our battery research, if you want to put it that way. And the significance of that is that um, Tesla a while ago announced that they are supporting uh, Dr. Jeff Don at Dalhousie University. They will be uh, funding all of his R&D. He's a lithium ion battery guru. And uh, Ed is a, Ed, uh, got his PhD under Jeff Don. They've co-authored papers and patents together. So I think that gives us a lot of credibility in the spherical graphite space. Um, a lot of juniors out there making a lot of competing comments and various claims about things. And I think when Northern Graphite says something about it, spherical graphite, uh, it carries a little more weight because of Ed Buell and Coolometrics. Of course, we at Investor Intel uh, happen to agree with you. We think Ed is, uh, Dr. Buell is incredibly brilliant, and we've been actually calling him to try and understand the market a little bit better as well for our audience. So, Greg, what should we anticipate as shareholders of Northern Graphite, say, in the next two quarters? Um, yes, uh, we recently um, put out a scoping study on the purification process. Uh, capital and operating costs. It was done by a very experienced high-end engineering firm who I cannot name. Uh, not because I don't want to, because they don't want their name out in public. And um, this morning we issued a second press release on coating spherical graphite. So 
To produce spherical graphite, you need milling, purification, and coating. We have brought all three elements together and will be able to provide or present a complete solution to Tesla and others saying, this is how we're going to do it. This is, how, this is what it's going to cost. This is the environmental footprint, which is very low, and this is an alternative to the Chinese process. So all of that stuff is going to be happening in the next month or two, actually. So Greg, what should, you know, maybe you can help us out here. Sure. Since you're, you know, in the graphite industry, what should investors be looking out for? Because we have so much noise and hype out there right now. Yes. Well, I would say the simple takeaway for the graphite space is you look at what's happened to the lithium price in the last couple months, and that's all cell phones, cameras, laptops, power tools. EVs are a very small part of the market. They're going to add more. Grid storage is still coming. There's a tremendous amount of runway left in terms of the growth of lithium ion batteries. It's already driving the lithium price, and I think graphite is next. Oh, well, that's super exciting. And Greg, thank you for joining us today. My pleasure.